Hey everybody, this is Alex. Now, I get this question all the time and I gotta admit that this has lingered in my mind as well because I don't have a clear answer. Well, today I hope to answer the question, is having the laptop plugged in, specifically the MacBook Pros that I have here, is having it plugged in going to be better for performance of building code than not having it plugged in? And furthermore, I wanna see how the low power mode is going to affect it on these two machines, which is the Intel variety of MacBook Pro and the M1 Pro versus the new energy mode options that we have in the M1 Max, the high power versus low power. I have a feeling that low power is probably gonna work the same way, but uh, this difference with high power makes me wonder how much higher is the power? <laughs> All right, let's get to the test. Uh, just a quick review of what machines we're dealing with here. Here I have the Core i9 MacBook Pro from 2019, 16 inch. Here I have the MacBook Pro 14 inch. It's got an M1 Pro processor in it. And here's a 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip in it. I'm using a test by Maxim Yerimenko called Xcode Benchmark. Uh, you've seen me run this test before. It's a nice test because it takes uh, just about a minute or so to run, maybe two minutes, depending on what machine I'm gonna be using. But that gives us enough to measure so that we can tell the difference really between having the machines plugged in and not plugged in. Let's begin with the Intel machine. And right now I'm starting off plugged in on all three machines. So uh, in the power options here, if you go to system preferences, then the power adapter options, you have this low power mode option. If I was on battery, I'd be switching to the battery mode option, and changing these settings, but these settings have no effect if I'm plugged in. So I'm gonna use the power adapter options. And I'm gonna leave this unchecked for now, and I'll check it the next time around. So I'm gonna go up here and run SH benchmark, and I'm gonna kick it off. All right, while that's moving along, let's go over here to the M1 Pro, take a look at the power adapter options here, and here we have the low power mode as well, I'm gonna leave that off and run our benchmark. Okay, now by the way, I did race all these machines before against each other, so if you wanna see those videos, I'll link to them down below. That's not what this video is about. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is our big M1 Max machine. So we're in power adapter, and this one is a little different because it's got the energy mode, and you can select low power, automatic, or high power. Now automatic says your Mac will automatically choose the best level of performance and energy usage using magic. I don't know how it determines that. Probably because it detects some kind of high demand on the processor, it'll switch it on. And it also maybe takes into account the power, the current power level of the machine. I'm gonna manually set that to high power so we can kick things off like that and see what we get. All right, there they go. You can hear the noise from my Intel machine. The other ones are still pretty quiet. The fans are off on the other two machines. Now, as a side note, I know that some of you are probably thinking, well, should I get the M1 Pro or the M1 Max? And what I've seen so far in my tests, and I don't know if this is related to the 14 inch model or the processor, I'm guessing it's because it's the 14 inch model. In my tests so far, this machine has been getting a lot warmer than this machine. So most likely it's because it's smaller and it has less cooling capabilities than the larger machine. I doubt that it's because it's the M1 Pro, but uh, perhaps I'll do another test. I would need to go and get another machine for that. Don't know if I have that kind of spare change laying around, <laughs> but I don't know if there's enough people that want to see that, maybe I'll do that. Okay, this machine happened to finish first, the 14 inch, M1 Pro and it finished at 110 seconds. All right, they all finished and I'm just writing this down so that I can summarize everything at the end. Just to review the results with you, uh, we got 199 on the Intel, 110 on the M1 Pro and 99 on the M1 Max. Interesting. Now it's time to do the same test again. This time I won't make you wait. And the reason I'm doing this twice in a row is to get uh, a little bit of an average going because, well, what if one machine was already warmed up more than the other one? So we wanna make sure we avoid that. Oh, and the M1 Max finishes first, 94 seconds. That actually coincides with the fastest times I've seen from that machine. M1 Pro finishes next at 108. All right, and 199, the most consistent result from the Intel box. Now I'm gonna pop off all these plugs. One, two, and three. Ugh. 
That one is not a mag safe, clearly. <laughs> All right, machines, do your thing. One, two, three, one, two, three. So first we're gonna see if having it unplugged is gonna have any effect on the build times. And then of course we gotta do all the iterations with the low power mode as well. So we're gonna have all these combinations. I'm probably gonna cut all that out of the video so the video is not like 30 minutes long. Who wants to watch a 30 minute long video? You wanna get to the point, right? And then I'll summarize the results at the end. So. They're done, and uh, this is interesting because the first two times I ran this on the Intel machine, I got the score of 199. That was plugged in, right? So 199 seconds, not a score, but this number of seconds. When I unplugged it, 188. Also, <laughs> this one got faster, the M1 Pro at 105, and this one is about the same. M1 Max is at 94. And I'm gonna do it again and again until we have our answers. Okay, this is painful to watch. This Intel machine is just taking so long to build these. But we gotta get to the truth, don't we? All right, this one was 200 for the Intel, 108, 92. 92, by the way, unplugged for the M1 Max is the fastest time I've seen so far for this build. And now it's time to go to low power mode. So on the Intel machine, because we're running on battery now, I need to go to the battery tab and turn on low power mode here. And I don't wanna to forget to do that, so I'm gonna turn on low power mode in the power adapter when I do turn that on for the next test. So, same thing over here. I'm gonna to go to battery, low power mode, and on power adapter, low power mode. I'm gonna do the unplugged test first, because they're already unplugged. And then I'm gonna go over here to my M1 Max, and instead of high power, I'm gonna select low power. And we'll see how much performance degradation there's gonna be using low power mode on all these machines. Let's go. I think because of this Intel machine, I'm gonna have a late lunch today. And I'm hungry. Ho ho ho, oh wow, okay. <laughs> so this is gonna be interesting. I've already got my results for um, the unplugged low power test. First iteration of it, okay. Let me do one more because this is kind of crazy. 264 for the Intel, 130 for the M1 Pro, and 104 for the M1 Max. I didn't calculate the percentages yet, but it seems like the M1 Max is least affected by this, and the Intel machine is most affected by it. But what's the surprising one to me is the M1 Pro. It's affected quite a bit. Not super thrilled about that. I'm also kind of happy about my decision of sticking with the 16 inch M1 Max as my machine that I'm gonna be using for all kinds of development work as well as the video stuff that I'm doing for this channel. Now, while this is running, the other question I often get is, well, what should a software developer get? Now, that's a tough question because there's so many different kinds of software developers. There's web developers, there's mobile app developers. Those are the two things that I do. And if I were two people, one was a mobile developer and one was a web developer, I would get two different machines. For my mobile self, I would get the highest possible spec machine out there because <laughs> running multiple simulators, building Xcode and Android Studio projects, it's gonna be faster on the new machines. And you need a lot of RAM to uh, run those machines, those virtual machines. I also use virtual machines a lot, so I would max out the RAM as well if I could. Now, if I was just doing web development, I would be super happy with just doing that with my M1 MacBook Air. I have not run into a case where the MacBook Air M1, somehow uh, I felt like it was not enough to do web development. Now, if you're gonna be running Visual Studio and you have a pretty heavy IDE that you're using to build uh, server-side applications and not just front-end JavaScript stuff, then you might want to look into uh, something else like the M1 Max or the M1 Pro and a, maybe even a bigger machine than the MacBook Air. But if you're doing JavaScript front-ends, MacBook Air is perfectly fine. Now, that was just a mention here. I'll probably be doing a, a deeper dive into what kind of software developers do what and what machine would suit them best. And if you wanna see that video, let me know in the comments down below. Okay, we've got our unplugged low numbers now. Time to plug it back in and get the low numbers that way. Boom, boom, boom. Whack, whack, whack. Sorry, folks. I've been sitting here for a while. But this is the last test. After this, we'll have the results and uh, hopefully this will put a lot of questions at ease. While it's doing its thing, just wanna point out that we're at 82% on the Intel machine. And this was from running that project, I believe four times unplugged, down to 82% from 100%. M1 Max is fully charged. 
doesn't look like the battery was affected at all and the m1 pro is at 97 percent we've got our final numbers here and i gotta say i'm not so surprised about the intel machine but i am surprised about the m1 pro machine that one is a little bit disappointing to me so uh the final results are here i'm gonna throw up the entire chart on the screen right now you can take a look at that uh, as you can see the unplugged variety didn't really have much effect at all on any of the machines they're pretty close to each other whether they were plugged in or unplugged however having it in low power mode or high power mode that's where we really took a hit and I mean, we kind of expected that. The biggest question here was whether having it unplugged was going to affect it, but no, it doesn't. The next question is how much of a degradation in performance are we getting from these machines? And it looks like the M1 Max is getting only a 9% degradation. The M1 Pro is getting a 19% degradation and the Intel machine a 28% degradation in performance from setting it to low power mode. That's it for today, folks. Appreciate a like for this video. Just hit it over there. It's it's pretty easy and doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me out a lot. And also, if that subscribe button is red, make sure you turn it gray by tapping on it so you don't miss any videos that I've got coming up, any more tests on these new machines. And otherwise, thanks a lot, folks, and I'll see you next time.